welcome back. Today I'm going to tie a streamer named the Hurricane. This pattern is also known as the Wonder. I'm going to start my thread uh, at the back this time. I'm going to tie in a tail for this pattern and I just don't feel like winding all the way down. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'll stop at the barb. I'm going to grab a jungle cock cape that I have that's been picked over. I'm going to use these body feathers here. And these ones on the sides are a little bit longer and, and thinner. So I think I'm going to use those. They've got a little bit more color to them as well. A little bit more brown. So I'm just going to come in with two feathers. Trim them up a little bit. You can just strip all the fibers off it. But I'm just going to trim them a little bit so there's something to bite into with the thread. So that way they don't spin around so much. So I'm just going to take a turn over the material and a few turns forward now you could tie this whole stem in but I'm just gonna come in and snip it off now I'm gonna come in with some flat silver tinsel I'm gonna tie this in the entire length of the body now this pattern was originated by Fred Fowler of Aquasic, Maine, and along with other popular tires of the 1920s like Carrie Stevens and Herb Welch, Mr. Fowler was considered one of the early pioneers of the Featherwing streamer. And the turns don't have to be perfect here. It's going to wind down towards the eye. snip off this little bit of material. Now I've got my flat silver tinsel. You could just stop the thread here and wind all the way down and make two passes with the tinsel. But you can see that I'm just going to wind this on all the way down. And so that I don't have to wind all the way back up, I'm going to leave the thread here at the barb and use it as a guide to wrap up with. All right, so just wrap underneath and around that thread. And you can see the thread will move with the tinsel here. I'm just going to wind this forward, touching turns as even as you can get them. As I said before, if you were worried about any thread underbody showing through, then the best way to avoid it is to just tie the tinsel in at the head and make two passes, one down and, and then back up. All right, just bind this material down. A couple turns in front and behind. Come in and snip it off. And right, now I'll wrap my oval tinsel forward. I think that tail looks a little bit long to me, but that's all right. I already know I'm going to be uh, overdressing this fly because my grizzly hackle is uh, kind of webby. I don't have any nice thin ones left. So I'm just taking some nice spiral wraps forward here. A few turns to bind it down. Now I'm just going to throw a couple half hitches in. And snip off the thread because I'm going to come in with some smaller thread here. Some 70 denier. Same color in black. 
snip that tag off. All right, you can see here I've got some peacock swords. I'm just going to grab uh, eight or nine fibers of this and tie this in as the throat. So I'm just going to come in with my fibers here, place them under the hook shank, hold them into place, and take a couple wraps over the top here. Just a loose wrap at first. And one in front of that and another. Make sure they're all oriented underneath the hook here. Come in and snip off those butt ends. Now a couple turns over the top here just to secure the material. All right, now it's time for the next material, some red bucktail. I'm going to snip off a clump here and pull out the short fibers and some of the stray fibers as well and get a nice even clump here. Pull out those crazy, crazy ones there. You want it about the length of the tail. And that'll work. And a loose turn over the top. A couple more forward. And then take the thread back to where you started. All right, now I'm going to grab a natural bucktail and grab some white fibers here. And do the same. Pull out the short fibers and all the stray ones that aren't going straight. Set it on top here. And just place it on top. Loose turn, couple forward, and bring the thread back. Now it's time to put the feather in for the wing. Uh, it's going to be a grizzly hackle, this white and black barring. So you'll need two of these, one for each side. Just put them on top of each other like this so the curves are both going inwards on each other. And that's it. That'll be my wing. Basically just set it on top like this. So I'll split these and put them over the head and I'll, I'll tie them in at the same time here. Take the thread over the top. Loose turn. Another loose turn. Now I'm really going to bind everything down. Build up a nice neat head with this black thread. Evening it out. Making sure everything's covered. And that looks good, so I'll throw in a couple whip finishes here. One. And two. Grab my scissors, come in and snip this off. Grab some head cement or lacquer of your choice. Put a coat or two on. And I didn't see that little stray fiber. I'm going to snip that off. And there it is, guys, the finished hurricane. This is a little bit overdressed, as I said. I knew I had some webby feathers to work with, so I overdressed it slightly. Uh, tied a little bit more sparse with a thinner wing, and it will probably fish a little bit better. Uh, I actually prefer the tandem version of this fly. I'll probably tie that up at some point in the future. All right, I'll leave you with one more fun fact with this fly. Uh, this was actually the inspiration for the Barn Special. If you're watching this channel, you've probably heard of the Barn Special. It's one of the more popular Featherwing streamers. I'll probably tie that one up for you guys this month, too. Uh, I'll do the tandem version. There's already a couple single-hook versions on here.
So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, comment. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. Tight lines, keep a hook in your vice, all that good stuff. See you next time.